Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. We're on the ground here in the Kodiak at Billy Bishop Airport. We got our passengers and cargo set up to head up to the Muskokas, and we're ready to get going. Now, as we've all had, this is a great plane, but sometimes the engine times out, and it's at the worst time when it blows up on you. Wouldn't it be great if we could make a button that reset and gave us a fresh engine. When we do things like say a hot start by mistake, how does that happen a lot of times? Well, maybe we flew a plane that would leave that condition lever in the forward position because it's tied to a mixture axis. Spent 20, 30 minutes getting ready, set up for your flight, got your sim brief, you got your fat sim, everything's all loaded. So you hop in and you start turning on the fuel you're doing everything, and of course that dinging starts happening, and it's bothering you. It's like, ah, if I just get this engine started, the dinging will go away. So you come down here, and you hit the ignition, you hit the starter, you fire it up, you're like, yeah, this is going to be great. And then the sign of death is in front of us. So we've already hit a hot start, and right there, we just blew up the engine. So now the engine's gone. Of course... We could always simply hop on out to the main menu and start the process of getting our flight all set up again. After doing the weight and balance, the cargo, all that stuff could be a pain. Through SPAD.next, I've got my stream deck set up so that I have an engine reset button. The engine reset button is comprised of actually three events that take place on a short button press. Because we want some of these events to only fire if a certain condition is met, we went ahead and just split them out. They'll all fire because it's all tied to a short press, but these events will only trigger if their condition is met. The first set that we're doing is not an event, but rather a change data value because we're adjusting a bunch of LVARs. Now, these LVARs are what the Kodiak is paying attention to for calculating the engine age and whether or not it's about to kill you. So we need to zero time the engine like we gave it an overhaul. So the first items are these failure items, like the overheat factor, the over rev factor, the over speed factor, and the over torque factor. Depending on how bad you're beating up your engine, these are the numbers that start going through the roof, and then they become a multiplier, which bangs away at your turbine age. Currently, I've never seen the actual turbine one failed Elvar do anything but stay at zero, uh, but I put it in here just in case in the future this one does start tracking. The other one we want to be careful about is the engine ITT. So even if we reset all these items, if we don't tell the Elvar to set the engine to cold, uh, we're going to have to motor the engine and deal with that manually and cool it down. And since we want to just reset it and start over, uh, we're also going to set that to zero. Because this process can also sometimes result in a fire, we're going to use the extinguish f engine fire event 11, which is engine one and extinguisher pack one. This does take some time, so even when you fired it, it won't instantly put out the fire. Uh, it'll take a moment, maybe 20 seconds, and eventually the fire, uh, you know, gets put out. So the, it is a timed thing. It's, it's not instantaneous, like setting all those other Elvars to zero. And of course, because it blows up the engine, uh, if the engine is failed, we will toggle the engine one uh, failure. Now, the reason for this is it is possible. I have had it where I've got the engine on fire, but it hadn't yet failed the engine because maybe I cut the mixture off or the conditioner lever off fast enough uh, that it never blew up, uh, but it still caused an engine fire. And the reason for this is we only want to reset the failure. We don't want to engage the failure. So we will only send the toggle event as long as the engine has already failed. Since there is no way to say, you know, reset engine failure, uh, it's going to send the toggle. So if your engine is perfectly good and you said this event, it would kill your engine. Now, how we did this is where things get a little interesting. And so by using the SPAD data monitor, this allowed us to go in and find those variables. 
So here when we're in the screen and we're using those variables, what we'd done is we'd used the add data, and I had been looking at all the SWS vars, and usually you jump in, I was like, okay, let's look at failure. So we could find the engine one failed var real quick. We were able to find all of the ones labeled SWS failure. So we were able to grab exactly those without a problem. So they'd added those in. And then what I also did was I knew I wanted to look for stuff to do with the turbine. So we, or sorry, the turbine's ITT was what was important. So I typed in ITT and then we found the LVARs. And if we want to filter on just the LVARs, then it was real easy to find the ITT VARs, including the engine in uh, ITT that's an LVAR, which belongs to, to SWS, uh, so SimWorks, which, of course, on the Kodiak means we're still sitting at 1,200 you know, degrees. And so, yeah, it's coming down, but all this time we've been talking, it's still so hot that this would blow our engine up. You can see our engine age, it cranked up to over 4,000 hours and then it blew up. And it was that heat factor that went through the roof. So right now we have a failed engine, but we don't have an engine that's on fire. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to press that engine reset button. And you're going to see just like that, we zero timed out all the VARs. And then instantly the engine ITT jumped up to about 22 degrees Celsius. We're now completely reset. So if we go ahead and go through the same steps and now start our engine, but of course we've got our condition lever set to the off position. So we're going to get our battery on. So battery comes on, Garmin's are firing up. We're going to go ahead and we're going to hit that ignition. We're going to hit that starter. We're going to wait for that NG to hit 21. And we put the condition lever into low. And there we go. ITT. So let's go ahead and we can get our ignition off and we can get our starter off. So we have a good start, and since we have a good start, we can go ahead and get our generator and our alternator on. So when you come up and you look at that SPAD monitor, you could see everything, including the age, is was zero timed, and now we just have these tiny little starts of minutes uh, of life in our engine. So that's it. We basically went ahead and we got ourselves back to a beautiful zero timed engine. Since we didn't have to go back to the main menu and load everything up again, it's great that we've got a zero time engine ready to head up to the Muskokas. If you made it this far, do me a favor, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't, so you can come along on future videos. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.